So this is a tutorial for how to solve a system of linear equations using the multiplication and addition method, sometimes referred to as the combination method for those connected mathers among you. Um, for the combination or the multiplication and addition method, what must be true? Well, for it to work, we must have opposites. What's the opposite of 4? Negative 4. What's the opposite of 3x? Negative 3x. So that's what we need. We need some opposites. Also, it's real helpful to have things written in standard form. So if those two things are true, uh, we, can, we can move on. All right. So let's take a look at our first uh, system. We have 2x plus 2y is equal to 5, and we have 3x minus 6y is equal to 12. And my first question is, do we have opposites? <sighs> not so much. <laughs> because 2x and 3y, they're not opposites. The opposite of 2x is negative 2x. The opposite of 3x is negative 3x. No opposites. We have 2y. What's the opposite of 2y? Negative 2y. What's the opposite of six, uh, negative 6x? Oh, oh my goodness. What is the opposite of negative 6y? Positive 6y. Do I have opposites? <sighs> no. So why on earth would I uh, talk about finding opposites and solving using addition and multiplication if I don't have opposites? Ah, that's right. This is the ad multiplication and addition method, right? A combination, right? So I can multiply something to get opposites. Sweet. So um, what can I multiply to 2x that would get me 3x? Oh, that's going to be some nasty fraction. I don't want to deal with fractions because they're just scary. So um, what can I multiply 2y by to get negative 6y? That's not too bad. They're already the opposite sign. And 3 times 2 is 6. So all I have to mul do is multiply this 2y by 3. But I can't just multiply one piece of an equation. I have to multiply everything. So I have 2x times 3, which is 6x. All right, that's not too bad. Uh, 3 times 2y is positive 6y. All right, or, or it's looking good. And now we have 3 times 5 is 15. Excellent. Um, and we'll remember that this top equation is equivalent to my bottom equation. They're the same thing, right? They just look slightly different. So now, after I've multiplied, I can now add. That's the multiplication and addition method. So I have my opposites right here. So I know that negative 6y plus 6y is going to cancel out to 0, so I don't have to worry about that one. Uh, 3x plus 6x is 9x. 12 plus 15 is 27, not 17, 20. Let's try that again. Gotta love the methane board. It really does not want to get rid of that one piece. Fine, 27. So what's the opposite of multiplying x by 9? Dividing x by 9, divide by 9. So we get x is equal to 3. Sweet. So I'm done. No, I'm not done. Shoot. We'll remember that uh, the answer to a system of equations is where lines cross on the grid or where they intersect. And I know x is 3, but I don't have my y value. So how am I going to get the y value? Oh, I know. Yeah. I can plug that in to my x value over here. So I have 2 times 3, because I'm just substituting that in, right? Uh, plus 2y is equal to 5. OK. Uh, what's 2 times 3? Two times 6, that's right. Plus 2y is equal to 5. The, the opposite of adding 6 is subtracting 6, subtracting 6. So I get 2y is equal to negative 1. Divide by 2, divide by 2. And I get y is equal to negative 1 half. So now I know where these lines cross, which is nice. The advantage to this method is it'd be hard to estimate that negative 0.5 or negative 1 half on the grid. This way, I get an exact answer, no problems. So let's take another look at, at this excitement that is solving through multiplication and addition. Um, this time, again, I don't have opposites, but <laughs> who cares about that? I can just multiply and get my opposites. Um, and I notice that this x does not have, a, it, it has a 1 in front of it, so it's, it's easy to manipulate. 
So uh, what's the opposite of 3x? Negative 3x. So if I multiply everything by negative 3, it won't always be a 3, folks. Uh, it should work out, right? So negative 3 times x is negative 3x. I got my opposites. Negative 3 times 3y is going to be negative 9y is equal to negative 12. All right. So uh, we recognize that these two uh, expressions are equivalent. And so now I can do my addition in my addition and multiplication method. So uh, 3x minus 3x is just 0. 4y minus 9y is going to be negative 5y. And that's going to equal negative 10. The opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is divided by negative 5. And I get y is equal to 2. Wouldn't it be great if you're done now? <laughs> but you're not, because now we have to find our x value. So I'm going to use this first equation here. And I'm going to plug in 2 for uh, y. So I have x plus 3 times 2 is equal to 4. 3 times 2 is 6, plus x is equal to 4. So what's the opposite of uh, adding 6? Subtracting 6 from both sides. So I get x is equal to negative 2. This is totally, totally awesome. So now, let's take a look. OK, come on. Let's take a look. There we go. It moved away. Let's take a look at some more questions. That's the wrong page. Let's try this again. There we go. Come on, Bessie, you can do it. All right. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells with this uh, board today. All right, so we have three new equations. And I'm going to fly through these ones pretty quick. So uh, for A, do I ha have opposites? I do. Well, I don't even have to bother with multiplication. I just add everything, right? So I can just add that. So I get 5x, these cancel out, is equal to 20. Divided by 5, divided by 5. So I get x is equal to 4. Then you know, you got to plug it in, right? So we have 2 times 4 plus y is equal to 5. So I get 8 plus y is equal to 5. So y is equal to negative 3. So my lines will intersect at 4 comma negative 3. And that's going to work for all of these. Um, this one, I don't have opposites, do I? No, but who cares? I can multiply by negative 1. And I will get a negative x. I'm willing to bet. So negative 1 times 11 is negative 11. Negative 1 times negative 6y is positive 6y. Negative 1 times x is negative x. And I should probably rewrite my top equation, because I've done nothing to that, right? So let's add straight down, get negative 6. I get, really, I get 8y, and I get 0. That is really obnoxious. Why on earth would they give you a problem that gives you fractions? Oh, because it still works with fractions. That's right. Excellent. Or not. But that's just, just the way it goes, right? So uh, divide by 8. 8 divided by 8. So I get y is equal to negative 3 fourths. It's not the end of the world. Just plug it in. So I have x plus 2. Uh, d d and instead of y, I'm going to write negative 3 fourths is equal to 5. So multiply, or we're going to multiply these here. These are going to cancel out, right? It's going to be 1, that's going to be 2. So I'm going to end up with x plus negative 3 over 2 better known as 1 and a half, I know, is equal to 5. So I'm going to add that to both sides. So I get x is equal to 6.5. Not the prettiest answer in the world, but it will do. So we get 6.5, comma, 
negative 0.75. Finally, for this one, it's just like the other one, so you're going to multiply this by 3. Now, there is one problem I do really want to show you before we move, before we stop this. Try this again. I'm going to slide. There we go. Taking the cow back into the barn. We're going to try one last one that I want to talk about really quickly. Let's talk about this one right here, D. So um, I don't have opposites. I need to make opposites. I noticed that the opposite of uh, negative 2y is positive 2y. So let's just multiply all this by 2. So I get 10 is equal to 2y. That's a positive. I get 4x. So let's add straight down. So I get 0, 0 is equal to. Wait a second. This is called an identity. If I were to graph this, I would get some, something like this. It's not going to be exactly the same graph. Just bear with me. You get one line, and then when you graph your second line, it would go right on top. They are the same line. They're just equivalent expressions of the same line. So if you were to get something equal to it itself, it's called an identity. This is the case that you have. Now, on the other hand, you could have done all of this work, and you could have ended up with something absolutely outrageous, like 0 is equal to 5. <laughs> no way. Are you going to get me convinced that's right? What's happening here is, if you were to graph it, you'd end up with parallel lines, which will never cross, no matter how long you graph them. I dare you to try to find where they cross. They won't. Um, so in this case, this is a no solution, which is fundamentally different than an identity. All right. I hope that's helpful on how to solve using the a system of equations using the addition and multiplication method. Also, for you connected math folks, it's called the combination method. Happy math magics. <laughs>